Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Taipei, Taiwan, and my pre-Computex video. Computex hasn't started yet. It starts tomorrow on Tuesday. Right now it's Monday, and uh, I had an idea. Why don't I hit up one of the vendors that I know and see if I can maybe get in early, maybe give you guys a sneak peek at what Computex has in store. And you know what? Gigabyte said okay. And they're always located right here in Taipei 101. So I'm going to wander in there see what they have going on, and uh, I will share that with you guys. That's kind of how this works. So uh, let's go. I have made my way inside, and uh, of course, Gigabyte always has excellent digs here at Taipei 101. Everything is still getting set up. People are cleaning. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of vacuums going and stuff, but I'm excited to be one of the first people to get in here to check out these X299 boards. Because obviously, if you guys weren't already aware, X299 is what it's all about for this week, 4 gigabytes. At least for now. More on that later. But uh, let's start off with this board. X299, X299 UD4. Uh, the UD series ultra durable is the mainstay from Gigabyte's stable of motherboards. And as you can see, this one is uh, pretty much outfitted with uh, all of the basics that you would want in an X299 board. You've got uh, all eight DIMM slots there for your quad channel memory. It's going to support your uh, Intel Core X series processors. Uh, and it's got an ASMedia 3142 additional USB 3.1 Gen 2 chip on there. With all the PCIe lanes that are available on the uh, Core X series of processors from uh, Intel, there is just a ton of peripheral connectivity and really high speed stuff that you can connect up here. So additional USB 3.1 is something that you're going to be seeing a lot. Here's a quick look at the I.O. on the back. Uh, but beyond that, you're also going to be seeing tons of connectivity for stuff like SSDs, NVMe, uh, as, and so we're mostly seeing M.2 support here for, uh, from Gigabyte, but this board actually provides you with two. One here right above the main uh, uh, PCI Express slot, and then one right here in below it. Uh, beyond that, you've got standard PCI Express layout. Of course, there's going to be some different configuration options with these boards, depending on which CPU you slot in there. Um, so I'm not going to delve into that right now. It's a little bit too complex to, uh, to sort of explain away in a single video. Um, but this is going to be sort of, we'll, we'll call this the starting out point from uh, Gigabyte. If you want a solid board, one that is uh, going to work for you for a long time, and not essentially super blingy either, either. you can have a little bit of LED uh, lighting here along the edge, but none of the RGB stuff that we're going to be showing you in just a minute with the higher end boards. But uh, tons of high end features, RGB fusion support, because you do have an RGBW header on there if you want to add some strips. You got Smart Fan 5 features, so you can do uh, fan stop mode for your fans, as well as hybrid fan headers that can support PWM or voltage control. Here are the fancy Oris branded boards. So I'm going to be talking about four of these. These are Z270, so don't worry about those. We got the uh, Ultra Gaming right here. We got the Gaming 3, the Gaming 5, and the Gaming 7. If you're wondering how these all stack up, it's probably going to be something like the Gaming 3, then that UD4 bar board that I just showed you, then the Ultra, then the Gaming 5, and then the Gaming 7. So let's start with the Gaming 3 right over here. If you want an Oris board that uh, has gaming in the name, which means it's meant for gaming, uh, you can use it for other stuff too, that's okay. Uh, but you want some RGBs on there. Uh, you also want a little bit of uh, additional expandability. You're still going to have two M.2 slots on this, pretty much in the same position that you saw in the UD4. But you're going to get some of the uh, additional features that Gigabyte offers, such as steel reinforced DIMM slots along here. A couple of steel reinforced DIMM slots uh, for a single or dual card configuration. And then you also have Pretty standard issue power delivery on this uh, main 24 pin and a single 8 pin. Uh, but you're going to have, of course, all 8 DIMM slots for up to 128 gigs of memory. Uh, and then, of course, you got a couple LEDs, not a ton, not overkill, but a bit of an accent lighting on the, uh, again, these two DIMM slots, I'm sorry, these two PCIe slots, as well as the Oris logo on the chipset down there. Moving on to the X299 Oris Ultra Gaming right here. And this seems to me to be kind of a nice midpoint. It's not going to be super towards the high end like the Gaming 5 and the Gaming 7 would be, but you still get tons of awesome features. So you're going to get uh, uh, an additional M.2 slot. You have the two, again, in the same positions above and below the graphics card, but they've added an additional one down here. It's actually kind of part of the chipset, and this one actually includes a cooler on there as well. It is a fairly substantial heat sink, not just a steel piece of metal or something like that. And there is uh, some actual thermal material on the back there, or like a thermal pad to make sure that you're going to get some heat dissipation from your SSD if you're putting a high-end NVMe SSD in there. Uh, again, you have an Asmedia 3142 USB 3.1 Gen 2 controller to give you additional connectivity for USB, including uh, both Type-A and Type-C ports that are uh, over here on the rear I.O. 
And if you're looking at the LEDs on this board and you notice that they look pretty significantly different from some of the LED implementations we've seen from Gigabyte in the past, well that is because they're digital. They've gone with digital LEDs and that allows them to actually individually control them. So on a couple of the other boards you can see uh, some of the effects I'll show you in just a second. Uh, but that will also let you control digital LED and RGBW strips. So you have a header, RGBW header at the bottom of the board right here. And then uh, the uh, next board up that we're going to show you in the stack also has a digital RGB LED header, uh, which is pretty cool as well. Bit of beefed up power delivery at the top, I would assume, just because we got dual 8-pin uh, CPU supplemental power connectors. There is another uh, WRGB uh, header up here at the top as well. And then this one is obviously decked out with a lot more LEDs. Uh, you have an accent along the I.O. You have, uh, they, they did sort of end... Uh, they, they put the LEDs kind of at the end of the PCIe slots here so that they kind of shoot across the side. So they got them on either side. It gives a, a much smoother look, I, I feel like, for those LEDs in particular. Then you have the LEDs running up and down in between the dim slots and, of course, the accents on the, uh, on the, on the chipset. Let's talk about the Aorus Gaming 7. I think I called this the Aorus Gaming 5 a, a second ago. It's the 7. Sorry about that. Uh, we got the 7 and the 9 coming up next. So for these, you're, uh, you're going to get more. You're going to get more, more stuff. <laughs> Again, three M.2s on this one. One, two, and three. You get the uh, heat sink at the, on the bottom one there again that integrates very nicely with that chi chipset heat sink. On the Gaming 7, you do get support for three-way configurations for graphics cards, three-way SLI or three-way three -way crossfire. Uh, again, you get the smart fan features uh, as well as the additional connector down here at the bottom. Uh, so you can add WRGB LEDs or you have that digital header so you can actually add digital LED strips or they're talking about the possibility of like a digital panel that you could add on there uh, that you could actually program in to do logos or, or that kind of thing. So I'm kind of excited and curious to see how that might work. But what I really like with these boards is just that the digital LEDs have, have sort of a different and more distinct look. And I think it looks uh, quite a bit cleaner than what we've seen on uh, the previous Aorus boards from the prior generation. And then uh, this one's kind of going a little haywire right now, but you can see sort of how you might be able to do some programming with the digital LEDs for this strip that goes from the bottom uh, to the top, or the top to the bottom, depending on which way you want to look at it. Finally, here's the X299 Aorus Gaming 9. Uh, this one has additional Asmedia 3142 USB 3.1 Gen 2 uh, with front and rear USB Type-C. So that means uh, that this board on the Gaming 9, uh, the Gaming 7 had this as well, has that USB 3.1 front panel header. So if your case is compatible with this, some cases are. I think BitPhoenix has some, and uh, you should see more adoption of that header in the future. You can get yourself a front panel USB and it's just a way better connector type than the old school USB 3.0 one as well that was all big and bulky and kind of stupid. They've also added a killer double shot NIC to this as well as Intel Gigabit Ethernet LAN. Uh, and then of course, got the RGB Fusion. Pretty much a similar layout as far as the RGB LEDs to the Gaming 7 right over here. And Alan's going to take this one off the shelf. So uh, we have an integrated I.O. shield right there. So you will never again forget to install your I.O. shields. Uh, of course, we have the inclusion of a uh, USB Type-C 3.1 right there. Uh, this has a BIOS feature. You can plug, you can update the BIOS without needing a uh, CPU or memory plugged in. Awesome, awesome feature. Can rescue you in the case of a failed BIOS update or something like that. You can also see the integrated uh, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi back here. And then a pretty cool feature on the back of this board, you have an, some armor plating. You have a back plate, uh, which also looks pretty cool. Got the Aorus logo on there. Uh, and this is great if you have a completely tempered glass case. That's, that's my opinion on these. Or if you're building your system like on a table, it's nice just to be able to set the board down and uh, not worry about potentially damaging any components on the back. So uh, good job, Gigabyte, with these Aorus X299 boards. Uh, they also have a workstation board. Let's, check, let's take a look at that. So guys, I'm going to be honest, I really don't know too much about what Intel has in store for their Xeon lineup uh, that's going to slot into LGA 20, 2066 motherboards, but Gigabyte is ready for it with the GAC422WS, this workstation board that they have right here. So this is the C422 chipset based. Uh, it is not going to support the, uh, X, the Core X series of CPUs from Intel, so uh, this is going to require a Xeon chip but that does mean it's going to support ECC memory. And uh, if you want like a no-nonsense board without any LEDs on it or anything like that, this seems like it's going to be the board for you. EATX form factor, 
tons and tons of connectivity. This is going to have support for uh, four-way GPU configurations. On a workstation, that's probably going to be more suited to something like a Tesla or Quadro setup or something like that for uh, doing GPU rendering. But absolutely massive amounts of connectivity and horsepower you have able uh, to connect to that. And again, I, I, I have no idea of any of the actual CPUs they're going to slot into here. So as far as core counts, PCIe lane counts, or anything like that, it's anybody's guess. But I did want to give you guys a quick look at this board because uh, especially for you guys who are in the IT space or like doing enterprise stuff, uh, having an actual really sexy looking workstation board uh, that, that's just all about horsepower and getting stuff done, I, I think that's pretty sweet. Gigabyte wanted me to check out this little device. Uh, it apparently has won a Computex Design and Innovation Award. Uh, this is the Gigabyte Bricks VR, which you might have seen us cover sort of briefly before. They've shown us sort of a tall version of the bricks like this in the past. But this one is a, a finished product. It has a GTX 1060 inside, as well as an i7-7700HQ. It can also support a couple M.2 devices in there for storage. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So I'd imagine you could use this as a normal computer, not just for VR. Uh, but they, uh, I imagine once the show gets underway, that again, they're still doing a bunch of setup here. We'll have a VR demo going on with this. They have it currently connected to an Oculus Rift. And uh, if you apparently want to play VR, but you don't have much space, then you can go for the Bricks VR. The, uh, the product name is BNI7HG6-1060, for, for those of you who are curious. All right, guys, I think I'm running out of time. They're giving me dirty looks because they have not finished everything they need to finish, and, and I have to give them time. But I, I really quickly wanted to show you guys some of these graphics cards, Oris branded Gigabyte graphics cards. Uh, that's an RX 570 right there. This is an RX 580, uh, the XTR8G, uh, from also from their Oris series. Uh, and then we also have a GTX 1080 Ti Extreme Gaming Edition. I just did a review on the non-extreme version of this card. Uh, did a very good job. Here in the back, we've also got a 1050 Ti, a 1060 Mini, and uh, the GeForce GTX 1078G, uh, but that's the blower style fan version. Keep an eye on this 1060 right here and how big it is, because uh, there's a 1070 version of that that I'm going to show you in just a second. Oris also has a gaming chassis, which uh, I was surprised. I didn't know that's something that they were delving into. This is the AC300W gaming chassis, which includes Oris, uh, an Oris cooler and an Oris graphics card. And apparently you can get Oris everything these days. Uh, I think there's, I don't even know if there's power supplies though. Are there power supplies? There isn't, there is an Oris power supply, I'm being told. So make an entire Oris computer, I guess, is uh, what I'm trying to say. I'm trailing off, okay. <laughs> so this is the Oris GTX 1070 gaming box. Look how tiny it is. Basically, you get a GTX 1070. Uh, it comes pre-installed. You get this tiny little box, which includes the power, uh, and then it is connected via Thunderbolt in the back. So all you need is a Thunderbolt compatible uh, computer. And uh, you can take something like a laptop, connect this up externally, and you can game on your laptop with an external graphics card. Now, these have been around, of course, before. We've seen stuff like the uh, Razer Core and, and other variants of that. But I certainly have never seen one that's quite this tiny and uh, also quite this strangely lit. But there it is. That is the Oris GTX 1070 gaming box. So guys, that is all the time I have for now here at the uh, Gigabyte offices at Taipei 101. Of course, I have my whole week of Computex coverage ahead of me, so I'd like to say a huge thank you to Gigabyte for helping to sponsor this video, for me to come out early and give you guys a sneak peek at what they have in store for Computex. They have more stuff that's still coming, so uh, I didn't even, even get the chance to see it all. So I know Kyle's going to be coming by here, so check out his channel. He's going to be doing Computex coverage all week as well. And uh, I imagine I might even stop back by here later in the week, because they told me there might be some more stuff in the works that they can't talk about yet. But uh, more on that in the future. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned to my channel. Subscribe if you want to see more Computex coverage from here in Taipei, Taiwan. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.